Hello there, can I get Carl? Oh no. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I was just I didn't know we were doing like hand signals or anything. Also, music gone. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise we were doing like hand signals for anything. So I got uh, like... neither did I, but I was just like, right, I saw him put a thumbs up, I'm just gonna go. Yeah. Cause I figured like we can you know what? Yeah, let's go for hand signals now. So welcome to episode did we get this mixed up last time? Yeah, I think we got it wrong last time. We fucked it up, didn't we? So we like episode sixty six or sixty seven? Uh, so last time was 66, but I think we said it was 65, so this one's 67. Okay, so yeah, for audio listeners, this is episode 67, for visual listeners, visual watchers, I guess it's the same thing, but once again, we are yeah. streaming this live on Twitch, so for the people watching live on Twitch right now on either my stream or Luke's stream, um, just recording the podcast now, we'll do Q&A at the end, but we may refer to chat um, as and when we feel like it, if we spot mm -hmm. something, um, you know, of, of note, or just yeah, worth yeah. commenting upon. But with all that out of the way, I need to comment on the fact I've now got... I'm slightly better lit. Slightly better lit, yeah. But this is a ball ache to do, so I might not do it every single week. So <laughs> I've had to bring through the lights. I figured I've got the lighting for the channel in my bedroom. Yeah. So I thought, well, let's bring that through. And I've done it. It does make me look... Well, I'm better lit, but fucking mm -hmm. hell is it a ball ache to get these giant professional grade lights around my house. Yeah, and I was just saying to Carl beforehand, is like, I have those same lights and I just bought them in case I need to record stuff. Mm -hmm. I was like, but for the podcast or the streams, when I put that light on, you can't see like the colored fluorescent rainbow yeah. light going on in the background. It was like, well, that kind of sucks. Cause that's why I got the smart light in. It's kind of thing. Also, yes, I am wearing a t-shirt with my face on it. I was recording <laughs> videos today. And this is, this is one of the ones that I wear for the gym because I'm not going to wear it out. Fair enough. So I thought I'm just gonna wear it to exercise in because I don't want to wear it outside the house and people look at me like, "Oh, is he wearing a t-shirt yeah. with himself on it? What a loser!" See, um, I I, I walk around like I've got a Legend of Kanto jacket and That's I'll walk around like with it on and it's just got like the logo of my face right here and I'm sure people must look at it and go, "Is that meant to be him? Is he wearing a t-shirt with his own face on it? What a baller!" <laughs> I ain't got the confidence to pull it off, so I won't do that. But uh, yeah, how you been? Uh, yeah, I, I'm good. And even though I told myself about 20 times I shouldn't be, I'm very excited for after this stream. Yes. So should we talk about that? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Like, we're going to be talking about it, I guess, a lot in a few hours when we do our Borderlands stream. But yeah, it's about to be the Nintendo Direct. And it's like the first proper um, Nintendo Direct that isn't focused on one specific game or franchise that we've had in like a year and a half. Am I thinking as well that like a lot of the other Nintendo Directs, they've just dropped this out of nowhere? Uh, so last night they just announced it and went, oh, hey. Because Nintendo's like the it's, last. It's like a fucking Wednesday in the middle of February, so I guess it's time to do a, a 50 minute video of what's coming next, like yeah. this year. Because am I right in thinking Nintendo's like the last company around who still does that thing of, yeah, here's a new game, it's out tomorrow? Yeah, yeah. And they it's love like... doing shadow drops, especially with like, indie games. I like um, that. I really like shadow I drops. I love it. And even when it's like. Um, not necessarily a shadow drop, but what they do with Paper Mario, where they tweet, tweeted out a trailer, went, oh, hey, new Paper Mario for Switch is coming out in two months. Cool. Yeah, I and like that. What? <laughs> okay. As we've talked before, I, I just abhor and just intensely dislike the hype cycle. I hate yeah. that I am now a part of it as a content creator. I hate that mm. I have to talk about it and discuss it and be... Um, asked about it like there's nothing yeah. worse than like for example tonight i'm presuming there's gonna be something about smash uh well if they've put in the tweet that the only thing they've confirmed is going to be in there is some announcement of super smash bros ultimate news presumably a new character so that's gonna be the new character i know for a fact that for the next easily the next week or two that's going to be something i'm going to be asked about at least two dozen times well i mean we'll literally stream and smash Directly tomorrow after. evening yeah so we're gonna so, be asked about it yeah, and that's the thing is, um, I turned around to Jenna and was like, well, I'm going to be watching this after the podcast before yeah. we stream our next stream because I have to. Otherwise, spoiled. every bit of news in that stream is going to be ruined for me it's as soon as we go on Borderlands. Yeah, it's going to be something you got asked about immediately. Yes. And um, it's just that thing of, like, yeah, I get it. It's fun. I'm excited it for fun. it, but at the yeah. same time, it's frustrating when you I'm forced um, to comment on it. Because yeah, people yeah. just ask over and over and over again. It's also as well, I don't really get to take things in in my own time anymore. Like I, like yourself, I need to watch that as it happens. Because I yeah. happen to be streaming this evening. And I, if I don't watch it, 
I'm going to be asked about it constantly and, like I say, just um, get constantly spoiled on it. Exactly, yeah. And, it, you know, it's one of those things of... Um, it's a minor complaint for yeah. having a, a, a nice, fun job like this. But, yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah it, as you say, it kind of takes a bit of the appeal and fun away from it at yeah. times. It's the most first world of first world problems. It's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. no, I have to consume content that I like straight away, which I was going to do anyway, <laughs> but I don't have the choice not to anymore. But... It's just that little thing in the back of your head where it's like, I was going to watch it, but... Now I'm being forced to watch it. I kind of have to. At least God though, damn it. At least, though, we don't do that thing of recording ourselves watching it and then uploading it with a thumbnail of doing this. Just like See, the last thing is, I remember, was it like the Sephiroth one where Charlie was like, oh, hey, let's just jump on a, a stream play, and I'll like, yeah. do it. And it was quite fun. But yeah, what gets me is, A, the, the, the Macaulay Culkin oh, face mm -hmm. on every thumbnail. But B, what you always point out to me is you always search for the trailer like the day after. And it is people's and reaction to it that comes up. Yeah. It's incredible. Like Nintendo's official Sephiroth trailer and the official trailer's 10th down on the YouTube search terms. Yeah, it, from the official Nintendo account. Because you think if I'm searching for Sephiroth Smash Bros, the day after the trailer drops, I want to watch the trailer, not someone's reaction to the trailer. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And like, yeah. fair play to the people for pulling that off, but it doesn't stop me hating them any less. Like, <laughs> I fucking abhor it. But speaking of just unforeseen and uh, just disadvantages <laughs> of being a known figure online, today okay. I got a message, Lucas. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring up oh. my phone now, and I'm gonna read out. It's a message from my accountant. Do, do, do. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna read it out now. It says here, um, "Have you ordered something from Amazon? We've just received something at the office." No. Yeah. Yeah, and I responded, no, question mark. Yeah, something has come from Amazon with your name on it. Uh, uh, Lucas, you've had this has happened before, so do you want to tell people, what, what am I talking about? What's happened? So more than likely, this will be, um, I presume a fan has tried to send something to Carl who asks people to not send him things, doesn't have a PO box for that very reason, yeah. And doesn't have his address listed publicly, but no. obviously your business has to have a public address. Which is listed which... as a unrelated building in a place in England I do not live and is an accountant's office. It is yeah. a one building just office with like eight people in it who handle like fifty other clients, including me. Yeah, so when the they turn around and go, I'm gonna send something to Carl. Oh, Carl doesn't have a PO box. Oh, he said don't send him things. I guess I'll just find his business details and send it to whatever fucking building is listed for that. Yeah, and like just, we are in a pandemic, so just sending someone a package out of the blue, I wouldn't recommend it. No, I, I, I wouldn't anyway. Like if if people are open to like having a PO box, send it there. But if people don't have one, then that, take that as a sign they don't want shit sending to them, let alone in a pandemic. Yeah, and what happens is uh, my accountant they throw all this stuff away. Uh, they have to yeah. ask me, obviously, because it's directed to me. It's like, did you order something? Mm -hmm. Is this um, something related to the business? Is this, like, bank detail, something like that? Uh, so they send me a picture of it because they're not allowed to open it without my permission. And yeah. I looked at it, look at the return to sender address, and I go, I recognize that name. Go into my email inbox. It's a sponsor. So okay. it's a guy who reached out. I'd like to... Sp I want you to sponsor... I think it's a book or something like that. And he's taken right. the initiative of sending me a copy of their book. And it's like, <sighs> yeah... Uh, so to that guy, it's been thrown straight in the fucking bin. And I'm definitely yeah. not going to do business with him anymore. Fair enough, fair enough. And and like... Like, I guess we've got chat here now, so I've got the opportunity to ask people. Um, would yeah. you want to do business with somebody who, without being prompted, unannounced, um, whilst knowing that you don't like this sort of thing, sent you a package out of the blue? <laughs> would you and want especially... to do business with that person? Like, it's weird because they already... I've obviously emailed you about a business proposition yeah. and have that open contact with you. And the fact that their um, like first thought was not to just send you an email going, oh, hey, we would like to send you this thing. Can we send it across to you? Like That would be the only way I would see it happening. And yeah. for some reason, that's not what their first thought. And I've had a couple of those where it's like we did one, me and you recorded a video where it's a sponsorship for a guy who's got uh, sells T-shirts. And he yes, did offer, yeah. I'll, I'll send you one of the t-shirts. Like, tell me which one you want, I'll send you it. It's like, I can't, because I'd have to give you my address, and I don't want you to send something to my address, because I don't want it publicly yeah. listed anywhere. 
also in a pandemic. So and again, this is why people have PO boxes, because if they are open to things like sponsors sending them goodies, then they have the PO box there, so they're not giving away personal details. And then someone says, if they're going to do something like be clever about it, make it something fun. No, the answer is no. The answer is don't invade people's fucking personal space if they don't yeah. want you to do it. There's, and, there's no like, like, like trick yeah. questions. It's just don't fucking do that. I would always as well ask permission to send something yeah. to people because regardless of whether it's something nice or not, if I got a package delivered to my address out of the blue and I didn't know who it was from, I I'd not. still be a bit sceptical. Yeah, and that's why... Uh, like I was saying, like people have asked to send stuff, and I was like, no, it's it's fine. Don't send anything through. Like when mm. I used to be at the office, I think um, when we did a collaboration with Ross Boom Socks, he yes. sent me a care package to my actual office, and I don't mind mm. that, but I can't get to that office anymore because it's fucking shut. Yeah. So yeah. But, Again, I mean, like if you have another means of someone to send it and can ask, then yeah, fair enough. But don't just try and find an address link to somebody and send them random shit. Also, I just noticed when I scroll across with my mouse, it appears on screen. Yeah! I'm going to pick your nose <laughs> with it. I'm going to pick your nose with it. There we go. Oh, no. No, no what? What we I do is I'm going to leave it in the middle of my screen because I know someone out there gets annoyed by it. There we go. The thing is, I don't know how you've done it then because, like, I've captured and cropped Discord so that my, I don't know. I don't know how it's done, it. but it's, it's on screen. Okay. I can wave it around right now. So that's going to show up <laughs> in the recording afterwards. But, yeah... I, I don't get what goes through someone's head when that happens. No, I don't know. I, I don't want... I want to know what they think is going to happen. Hmm. Because I've never met anyone who would appreciate just a random um, uh, point of contact out of the blue from somebody they don't know. Yeah, and I think the only time I can think in my head is like, you know, when you see those streamers that like, got PS5 sent to the house out of the blue and it's like, if something was marked from Sony, like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe if it's a big company that yeah. have no reason to send something dodgy to my address. I'm also as well not going to make the joke of if someone sent me a PS5, I'd be all right with that because someone will fucking send a PS5 and I'll feel really yeah. bad about it. Again, not a PS5. The fact that it was sent from a respectable company yeah. is what would like make it... A not okay, but make me a little bit less uncertain about the whole situation. I also, as well, don't feel bad taking something from a giant faceless corporation that makes billions of dollars a year. Exactly, yeah. And like, uh, but just, yeah, that's that's something that happened today. And just my account, <laughs> I, 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 every time it happens, I apologize to my accountant and say, there's no, pro no need to apologize. This is why we set the business up here. Mm -hmm. We just need to know if it's official correspondence or whether to dispose of it. Because people wondering, it gets disposed of immediately. It does not yeah. get open, it gets thrown straight to the bin. Because I know, even though I'm saying out loud, I do not want this. I do not appreciate it. Someone out there is going to hear, oh, but there's a way to contact cats that you won't. It's not going to get no. opened. It's not going to get seen. It's going to get thrown straight into a bin. And I know you've mentioned before that people have said like, oh, hey, um, I I've sent you like some drink or something to the office. Like, Did you get it? And it's like, well, no. Straight in the bin. It goes straight in the bin. And that means you've wasted your time and money on like, a valuable thing to try and send it to me. Yeah. It's like, don't bother, because it's literally a waste. It's also, I can't get it. I can't no. get to my accountant's office. They only go no. in there like once a week to check their mail, which is how they mm -hmm. like, you know, found it. Like, they're all working from home. Ah, as they should and, be. Yeah, it's, it's bizarre the amount of times that you'll, you've will you mentioned this, and yet people don't seem to get it through their heads. So, like, I've seen you mention it on different social platforms and on this podcast before. And yet you still get people doing it. And there will no doubt be people do it again in the future. Yeah. For some well, that's just like, reason. you know, something that happened today. and was like, it's, it's just like, oh, man, what, what a great thing to start my day. Because I woke up feeling pretty good and went, oh, for fuck's sake, I've got to yeah. deal with this again, again. Because now I've got to have, like, have it out with a guy. Because I've got his email yeah. address. Like, we're in the middle of, like, discussing a, uh, a potential sponsor thing. And I'm wondering, uh, is he going to, like, try and defend it? Of, like, what it means is like, oh, I'm not going to fucking work with you now. Why would I work with someone mm. who did this? No. And that's the thing is, you know, hopefully they can take that as a a life lesson and just a moment of learning and just move on. But yeah, you know, they it's that. very unlikely that a lot of people that would think to do that in the first place will take it that way. Of course, yes. But uh, other than that, not much has happened to me this week. But what about yourself? Anything interesting? Anything out of the blue, uh... unexpected? 
No, not really. Like, <laughs> there's not got, much happens, is there? There's not much happening. But last weekend, um, I did manage to buy a replacement drum pedal for Rock Band. So we we played a bit of Rock Band for the first time in like a year. I am so so <laughs> like just tentatively hype for how excited everyone seems to be for the idea of all playing Rock Band because I think yeah. Nisha like was tweeting out, "I've got a drum kit for Rock Band." Mm-hmm. Well, and like. Then, yeah, that's the thing is, I've got the the basic set, but me being a person who, you know, I actually learned drums when I was younger a bit, not pro or anything, just uh, amateur, but, mm-hmm. like, I still don't have working cymbals for the set, and they're the thing that cost a shit ton of money, and people are, like, selling them for hundreds of dollars for the full set, and I'm like, oh, this is bad, and that's yeah. why, like, I tweeted out jokingly, just like, if anyone wants to, you know, sell me rock band and not scourge me for fucking everything I've got, like hit me up. But obviously, that those things are just um, like going like the availability of them is just going down and down because they haven't been produced in years, yeah, and the price is going further and further up. And people and people who have them know what they've got; they know how much they're worth. Yeah. Mm, and uh, for sure. like, it's one of those things where we just talked about: don't send me stuff I don't want. But in a world where we're able to actually meet up. If mm-hmm. like, we, we talked about we're going to do like fan meetups and we've got a bar tentatively yeah. again uh, worked out to have like a bi-monthly just meetup with fans where we'll set up stuff like Guitar Hero and things like that. Mm-hmm. It would yeah, be a thing of, sure. if a fan out there has it, if you can bring it to the event, I'll buy it off you. <laughs> like, bring it to the event, I'll buy it off you and I'll pay you for your time and your effort to bring it there. And then like, you know, we'll just add it to uh, the collection of shit we've got at the office. <laughs> Yeah, and it, it to be fair, like it did make me super hype to have a proper night of get like getting a big group together and playing rock band again. Because even just me in general playing it is like it brings really back, fun. Yeah. But, oh, and then I load up Rock Band Four, and it's like, oh okay, calculating your downloaded content is like ten minutes later. Click on it. You have like five hundred and eighty-five songs available. Yes. Like, oh! it's like, so this good. is why I've spent fifteen years building up a rock band library. No, I am. Um... I, I'm like just quietly hype for when we're able to do that. It's yeah. something I'm, like, I'm genuinely looking forward to being able to do when we all come out of lockdown. Yeah, because we mentioned it last week, and I just started looking again. Like, I need to, I need to start building this back up. Because I think like Nisha's going for the Wii, mm. but you've got all yours on Xbox. So it's something that we'll have to like you know discuss in more detail in the future. Exactly. But, yeah, that's the thing is because. I'd, I'd be less asked if I didn't have nearly 600 songs on my Xbox all on one game. It makes sense. And that's yeah. just pop it on and we're sorted for the entire night. Yeah, it makes sense just to get everything for that, just because of the sake of the amount of extra content that we have. But mm. like, just there's something weird and just like oddly, I guess it's like a millennial thing. Because mm. I guess like uh, Zoomers, I think, I don't know, Gen Z, they haven't had chance to grow up and be nostalgic for the things they grew up with yet. We have. Yeah. Yeah. And for the things sure. we're nostalgic for though are like technology. And technology is like um, finite by def like by its design. Yeah. It goes obsolete after like, you know, it gets replaced every couple of years. So the things mm-hmm. that me and you are um, nostalgic for, like stuff like Guitar Hero. How the fuck like what are you gonna do like in 10, 15 years? Yeah. And this is what I was saying to Jenna. I was like, you know, I and whenever anyone says to me, Do you have regrets in life? And I'm like, No, because the things that I did got me where I am now. I got, you know, a nice life with Jenna and working with you. And yeah. I can't say I regret anything other than not buy all the fucking Rock Band 4 instruments when they came <laughs> out and just stop piling them. Because they only get more expensive as time goes on. Yeah. And I, I'm in that um, that same vein where as a, a kid, like by necessity, I traded in all my games. Because the only yeah, way I could I get new games one, yeah. was trading in all my games to get a new game. And just now I'm an adult, like, I think it might show up a little bit on camera. You can see like behind me is like my shelf, the other YouTuber shelf of gaming shit. Yeah. And there's like a PS2 and a GameCube and a PS1 in there. But it was like, I've still got a bunch of games that I don't have anymore. That I'm mm-hmm. nostalgic for as an adult that I'd love to play again just to experience them um, one more time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, I can't. and I'm missing a lot of it, especially at my Nintendo library because Nintendo games keep value a lot more. Uh, so when I was like, struggling for money in uni and things like that and sell them just selling things off and like when we turned around oh yeah we should stream some borderlands 2 there's a look to the side where i've got like all my xbox and playstation games one yeah yeah borderlands 2 well i guess i sold that at some point and i'm just like great it's just it's it's 
it's it's weird. It's weird to think that as well. The things that I'm nostalgic for from my youth, like my dad, like the things he's nostalgic for, like mm. our games as well, like arcade games. And arcade games are always getting fucking re-released. Yeah, there's always going to be like one of those like shitty um, like um, what are they called? I forget what they call not joy. They're not joy cons. Joysticks that has like joysticks, a, a yeah. thousand inbuilt arcade games that you can buy. Yeah, like that dumb Capcom one, which was the giant Capcom logo. And but, it's like, what? You're not going to be able to have anything like that for, I don't know, like Medieval. Like like, that's a bad example because they did a remake of it. But like, you know, I was going to say, I literally have that on PS4, but, but yeah. Am I, are they ever going to release like a Bloody Raw 2? Just yeah, standalone it... arcade handheld thing you can plug into your TV? They're not other. And that game's gone. For all intents, mm-hmm. but it's gone. You can't play anymore. But I want to play it. I want to play Bloody Raw 2. I fucking love Bloody Raw 2. And that's why I think so many people clamour for... With Nintendo stuff like, oh, Nintendo Switch Online has that NES and SNES library. Yeah. And everyone's like, okay, keep doing it. Like, keep doing that because we want those N64 weird games and the, the weird Game Boy Advance games on there. And like, yeah. a lot of the time, there is just no way to play that on modern technology. Like, I want to go back and play Ocarina of Time on a big TV and I have to like, buy adapters for my 4k tv now and it's like okay yeah it's the same thing with like um uh, playstation i've got a ps4 sat right next to me used for recording mm. it's like you don't play ps3 games i've got like 30 no. 40 ps3 games behind me i can't play them mm. because my ps3 works but my controllers don't and oh, because God, yeah. playstation has proprietary fucking charging cables for the ps3 they don't charge oh yeah yeah don't forget sony has proprietary charging cables for all of its stuff so i've got psp that's a fucking, mm. like, it's got PS1 games on it. I can't play it because I ain't got a fucking charger for it anymore. Again, it's and a I proprietary have, like, charger. <laughs> yeah, I had that with the Wii U recently of, like, oh, man, I've lost my charger for my Wii U and, like, we were going back to play Wind Wake HD and um, I have, like, a giant tower of boxes of, like, you know, office boxes and I've categorised all my wires, like, Nintendo consoles and so going through it all. Well, I can't find my, my charger then it's like, oh, what about any other Nintendo charger? No, they specifically have like a Wii U gamepad charger. Yeah, I like as well. Like, I've got your system. But I have shoe boxes instead. Oh, okay, yeah. Because yeah, every year, I don't know if I told this story on the podcast or what, but um, you may have noticed for like what five, six years, I wore the same pair of shoes. Yes, that's yeah, because yeah. I found one pair of shoes I really liked, and then every year for Christmas, my dad bought me the same pair of shoes. <laughs> just, he just bought me the same pair of shoes again, mm-hmm. and then that pair of shoes become my like going out shoes, and then the old ones become like my workout or gym shoes or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I have like just six identical um, shoe boxes, each of which has like a different era of gaming. It's like one for all my um, GameCube wires, one for my PS2, or PS1, one that has like my Game Boy stuff in it, one that oh, has right, sorted yeah. cables and old phones and uh, memory cards and things like that in it. Mm-hmm. It just keeps going and going and going. And every year I look over when I, or whenever I move and look and I've got all like, these shoe boxes stacks. Like, they're ready. They're waiting. <laughs> I don't use them much, but when people want to come around, if they want to play fucking SNES, it's there. The cables are in there. Yeah. They're waiting. They're ready. And that's the thing is, uh, for all, you know, a long time, I had just like that man draw and it's like, all the cables are just like Everywhere. a big bundle together. There's no, like, getting them apart from one another. You have no idea what cable is which. So when I moved flat last time, I uh, was like, no, if I'm going to, you know, move in to, like, have an office space, I did that thing where I got, like, a shoe organizer for all of my uh, my controllers and put that on the door. And that's a really good idea, by the way. And it, like, fits a couple of controllers in each one. People see it and then just went, that. let's get some, like, office drawers and label each one, like, here's my Nintendo wires and spoil them all up so they don't tangle with one another and i'd recommend it to mm-hmm. anyone that wants to keep old stuff because it makes your life 10 times easier yeah because i've said um uh, that if I, when i eventually get my own place i'm gonna get you know, those like super classy display boxes you oh, get, yeah. like, the, the clear yeah. ones i'm gonna get like three or four of them i'm just gonna put like my playstation 2 in it with one yeah. co- with one controller and then one game that i like and i'll have that and then one and that's item. the thing i think i'd also like to buy up some like extra pads and cut the wires off them for display purposes and stuff yeah because i did that for like my old rock band wired controller that was on its way out anyway and doesn't work on the xbox one you need wireless ones yeah i was like well this one's not going to be used anymore and i want it for display purposes but every time i display it you've got this like eight foot wire just dangling (laughs) about everywhere it's like no it's 
It's gone. Oh, man. But we all know the best one of those was the one for the Xbox 360 for Guitar Hero. That was the Flying V. Yeah. Because that was the USB yeah. one. And, oh, I love I love them. And I think, what well, like, I've got one of the the Beatles one that people really like, the uh, Rockenbacker. But I never got the Rock Band 4 Jaguar controller, like the Fender Jaguar. And I love that. It's like really super sleek design. And I'm like, yeah. oh, god damn. I just like the Flying V because that's the guitar that I have because it's just a Flying V in my bedroom. It's like, yeah. Oh, Flying V is just a classic, classic guitar. It's cool as fuck, but I can't play it because it's just it's impossible to rest on your knees. So you have to play it standing up. You do, yeah. Yeah. And I've also got, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, actually, yeah, you can just Google it. If you just, uh, if you just, actually, I'll find it. I want to find a picture. Because huh? this is the, like, oh, going to do it. Yeah, this is the guitar that I bought for myself and I got a really good deal on this. <laughs> And it's like, it's super, super fucking stupid. And I hate, it looks ridiculous. But I, I think it's one of those things that I am going to, again, when I get my own place, nail it to a fucking wall. It's like, have a look. It's on Discord, Lucas. Oh, okay, yeah. So if you want to see what I'm sending, Lucas, just search the um, Jackson V guitar. Yes. I've um, got that one. Oh, God. Which is... Uh, I love those type of ones. are just... It's so sharp. It's so scary they're, they're to wield. It's super... Weird. Sharp, like I can't remember what the it's called, like the Explorer one as well, where it's just like the X shape, and yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, I love those type of guitars. Yeah. So, the Jackson V, um, I really like it, it has very low action and action. I think, I think that's the right term for it. It's like how close the strings are to the neck because I've got really bad grip in this hand, so I need oh, okay. guitars with super low action to be able to play them like at all, really, right? And I just remember that one, I'd be like, yeah, fuck yeah, it's so fucking cool, <laughs> and yeah, I can't. Can't tell you whether your uh, guitar terminology is correct or not. Uh, I think someone I said, like... yeah, it's action. Oh, okay, cool. It's been a while since I've, like, spoke to someone about music. I've got a friend of mine who's super fucking good at guitar, and I don't like playing my guitars anymore because he's so much better than I am that I feel <laughs> bad when I play the guitars and I'm really bad, and then he comes in and plays it. It's like, oh. Yeah, and that's the thing is, I, like, when I was learning drums, I met a lot of people playing guitars, but I can't remember anything. There's like a couple of times when you know people showed me chords and stuff, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, cool, yeah." I don't remember any of it. I can't play chords. Let's go. I'm, I'm really bad at chords, like because I just I do not have the dexterity in my hand. I'd play power chords, but <laughs> I play power chords and I play drop D. So anyone who plays guitar knows that I don't know how to play guitar, but it sounds like I can play guitar <laughs> if I play it and no one knows what I'm doing. It's just cheating. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> so, oh. Always looks impressive to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's like I guess it's the same with drums, isn't it? There's yeah. probably like some really simple loops you can play that sound impressive, but you know, I'm not really doing anything here. Yeah, and like when I've played um, even rock band with all the cymbals and stuff with friends, people are like, oh man, you can play drums and I can't play drums for shit. Yeah. Like I know people that have played drums for like a couple of years that can kick my ass. Yeah, and I'll still think one of the coolest things I've seen at a house party, because you know at a house party you always have that one dickhead who plays guitar and no one wants to Oh yeah, that. of course. Yeah. And everybody hates that guy. Yeah. I remember when I was at the house party, and there was a set of drums in one room. And obviously, everyone goes in and just bangs on the drums like a knobhead. Mm. But just once, this really drunk girl that I, I went to in college. Oh, okay. And I, I was in her form or something like that. And we never really, we didn't speak much, but she was really quiet. And she was like super wasted. She went into the room, sat down at the drums, and just played drums for like 30 minutes. And everyone's like, <laughs> who knew she could do this? And she never talked about it ever again. Oh, man. <laughs> the only time. It. I was going to say, the only time I've had a good experience with that is, like, wasn't necessarily, like, a flat party, but more, like, you know, I guess, like, a gathering, as you would classify mm -hmm. it, of, like, or maybe, like, a dozen or so people having drinks and stuff when we were out to our, our mate's flat. Mm -hmm. And they had, a, like, a keyboard and electric drum kit. And we were drunk at, like, one o'clock in the morning and ended up jamming out to... Pokemon Lavender Town theme yeah. and trying to pick or like the Pokemon Tower, like you know, the creepy and trying to make a like rocked up version of that drunk. And it was like, yeah, that that's fun as well. Uh yeah, because I've got like a that said, that friend of mine is really, really fucking good at guitar. And because he's been stuck in lockdown, mm. all he's been doing is playing guitar. And no, every fair, yeah. single day he just sends me a Snapchat of him playing his guitar. And I'm like, God, he's so fucking good. He's so much better than I am. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I'm just now embarrassed to pick mine up and try and play, but one day I will. One day I'll go back to playing guitar. I'll pick it back we up. Can, we can keep so. telling ourselves, Carl. Yeah, same thing I tell myself all the time. I'll learn to play it one day. And a guy did <laughs> gift a bunch of subs because of um, 
you said you play drums, so cheers to that guy, Two Guns Host. Cool. Cool. Uh, which I guess yeah. you know, we can use as a jumping off, something I saw today. And it's I'm not sure how to react to it, because I think it's a conversation we've had, and it was um, just a conversation I happened upon in your daily scrolling mm-hmm. about the idea of people donating money to streamers, in particular, and specifically, very rich streamers. And do you remember the conversation we had I, on stream while a little bit drunk about this? Uh, vaguely, yeah. So it was yeah. like a couple of weeks ago, right? Where I accidentally depressed myself thinking about um, a hypothetical that has probably happened more than once. Oh, of um, yeah. So like kids asking for, you know, money on Twitch, mm-hmm. and the parents not quite realizing why they're asking for the money. So like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then in this hypothetical, the kid is going to, you know, a massive streamer, say Ninja, for example, and donating their birthday present money to Ninja, to see who's earning answer. like millions of dollars every year. And I depress myself thinking about that. I, even though it was a hypothetical I made up, it made me feel sad to imagine. Because I, I pictured my mum when I was talking about that. Like, my mum, mm. who, like, worked really fucking hard and um, I, is uh, looking after my sister. And just I just imagined like, if my sister was into streaming, which she's not, thank God, um, just asking <laughs> for birthday money, taking the birthday money, and then going to donate it to fucking Ninja or some other millionaire. And how just hollow I would feel upon hearing that. <laughs> And you know it's probably yeah. happened at least once. Oh, many a time, I'm sure. And imagine, like, okay, let's, you know, look at it from the kid's perspective. All they're doing is, oh, hey, person I like on the internet, here's some money I really enjoy watching you, and I think, like, you know, here's a nice thing to do. And that's a perfectly valid thing from the kid's perspective. I don't, I don't question that. But the fact that, yeah, then the parent finds out and goes, all that hard-earned money yeah. that I, and the nice present that I've given to my child has gone to pay a millionaire. Yeah, and I'm thinking... For how, playing games. I'm thinking, so. like, how hollow you would feel as, like, the parent in that situation. Like, mm. say, like, if you're, like, a single parent or something like that. Yeah. And you try to do the best for your kid and you ask them what they want and they say, I want Twitch bits. And you're like, you know, you, f- you know what fucking bits are. Mm-hmm. You just know it's, like, some, something your kid likes. You know, it's something on their computer. You yeah. find out how to get these. You give them the money, the code, whatever. You ask your chat, so what, what do you do with, with the bits? And say, oh, I gave it to, again, like Ninja. So who, who's yeah. that? And then you Google that person's name is, and you see the headline, Ninja paid $50 million to go on Mixer. Yeah. And you realize that you spent an entire day working to get that present for your kid and they threw it at a fucking millionaire. <laughs> and, you know, the, this is... Um... Something that happens on a global scale every day, but with it being Twitch streaming, it's different because it's going to an individual person, yeah. And you can like see that that face, and it's like, yeah, okay, you know, it's I guess similar to buying a a fucking CD for an artist that you like. You know, well, it's there's nothing different, but when it's just a person sitting on a stream, yeah. it feels different. Yeah, like buying a CD. I, you know, you're getting something out of it. I guess you are getting something out of it when you like don't don't donate money. But just like that so. hypothetical yeah. just made me so fucking sad. Yeah. And I just sat there and thought about it like the next day, like, God, that's fucking awful. I would feel so gutted. But we, we mentioned it on that stream as well of um a lot of parents going like, Oh, okay, well, let's give you some V Bucks for Fortnite. Yeah. And this is why a lot of a lot of um places have their own currency because there is that bit of that dissonance between real money and the yep. virtual money. But yeah, here's here's some V-Bucks for Fortnite or here's some points for your FIFA Ultimate Team. Like, oh, so what did the, that $10 worth of V-Bucks actually get you? A skin. Oh, it got me a dance for my virtual character. Uh, oh. Yeah. So like no new content or like things you can use? Like, no, no, it lets my character do a different dance. And I'm just thinking like, like just put myself in the um, the shoes of a single parent who like worked all day because this has got to have happened with how many millions of people play yeah. those games and support mm-hmm. like you know these streamers that has to have happened just like you know guaranteed like, yeah uh, just like law of probability it has to have happened at least once and the idea that it might have happened it's like oh god I feel I feel bad thinking about if I was in that situation I can't imagine how it feels if I was in it yeah god and that's the thing is. I don't mind um, the idea when, you know, it's 
an adult who has their own income, who, you know, can see these kind of things happening and go, okay, well, I I can evaluate my situation and give some money to somebody I enjoy watching. Mm-hmm. But when there's that two-step process of like the parent giving their money to a kid who doesn't really understand what they're doing, yeah. that then spending their parents' money on a millionaire, and it's like, oh, that's when it gets a little bit different for me. It just, I do not feel clean discussing or thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And I would be curious what other people are. We've got a chat here. Like, how do you feel about that? And maybe we'll, like, you know, we'll go through someone a bit, but God, it makes me feel it's like it hurts me inside to think about. It does. Um, but I also, as I've said, like I, I've supported creators in the past that I enjoy watching. And I get the idea that, oh, these guys are providing free content and, you know, I want to reward the entertainment they've given me in a small way that I can, whether it's like donating money or going out and like buying merch and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always understand it, but yeah, it's it's a bit different when you put it into your head like, oh, but I know a lot of these Twitch streamers appeal to children. And then they go out of their way to uh, foster those parasocial relationships. Mm-hmm. And, it's- and I guess that's why oh. we constantly not make an active attempt to like tell kids to get out of our stream or anything like that but we make a conscious effort to try to appeal to older viewers i guess and as well just like completely just shut down parasocial relationships like the start of this stream was me going fuck off with like trying to send me shit in the mail <laughs> <laughs> oh but i just saw like, that discussion it reminded me of that one and i thought oh god yeah i need to talk about it again because I, I keep thinking about it it, it, oh, it really makes me upset. It makes this me upset imaginary <laughs> family in Carl's head. But it's not imaginary. Like, by streamers. The, so, like, ha- like, probability says it has to have happened at least once, and the fact that it's happened makes me really upset. Yeah, and um, I I will say that I don't think it's um, the responsibility of the streamer to be conscious of who is donating to them. I do think mm-hmm. it is a case of like, yeah, these are different times and you have to be like teaching your children the responsibility of like using money online and maybe teaching them what that donation is going towards or like where their money is being used or uh, yeah. like your money but their money that you give to them no, and uh, again it's that thing where we were talking about like oh well how responsible is ninja to teach people not to be racist and stuff and it's like <laughs> he's like no it's not my bro- it's not my job it's not my job to teach people not to be racist yeah but it is your moral no. responsibility dickhead but is it is a moral responsibility to like shut that shit down when you see things that are wrong but it's also definitely not a streamer's responsibility to sit every kid down and teach them that in the yeah. first place but uh, the one that i do like though is the uh, the video or the clip that goes around every now and again and you must have seen it it's the girl who gets money donated to her and then tells the guy it's not enough. I don't think I've actually seen that. Okay, it was, it was a viral clip that went round. It's like, oh, like, look how entitled streamers are. And it's this girl hmm. getting a donation from a guy, I think like five, ten dollars or something, and saying it's not enough. Right. And that girl got fucking slated for it. And it mm-hmm. turns out, if you actually do some research on it, so they're just hating the thing. Like her shtick online is financially humiliating men. And right, it, I think I've seen this person, but not that video. I think yeah. I've seen like, a different video of her, yeah. Yeah, and it's um, her shtick is like men send her money and they get off on the idea of being like human. It's basically, it's the dominatrix, but she, she takes you yeah, money um, and makes money like, for that. Because I, I think I know who you're talking about. I think I've done the same thing of like, look up who this person is. And it's like, oh, this seems like a horrible thing to be doing to people. And it's like, no men are paying to be humiliated. That's kind of like... A, so I guess a fetish kind of thing. Yeah, like in, um, I'm not gonna like um, uh, give someone guff for what they get off on, but like that is a fucking hustle. That is a hustle, but taken out of context, it does look so incredibly bad. It does. And but... then that's the thing is, how many people saw that and called them a horrible person? Without who sent messages context. to them compared to the percentage of people that actually went and checked. Oh, who is she? Like, yeah. what, Which is what, what I does do. this person do? Yeah, well, I didn't even yeah. need to do it because I saw it and went, this has, it's probably that. Because I was aware of financial dominatrixes because um, I, like, uh, a couple of my friends are, like, um, really into or pro-sex work. And they've talked yeah. to me about yeah, it before. Course, yeah. And they've told me, like, the dream for them is to get into that. 
Because that is the holy fucking grail, isn't it? Of men I can give, imagine, yeah. Men give you money, and then you tell them it's not enough, and they give you more. That oh is God. the fucking dream right there. Those people are living their absolute best life. That they is are, the easiest job in the world. Every now and then you see kind of a... Um... Like, I don't really understand that mentality of wanting women to do that to you, but then you kind of see, like, the the uh, submissive person come out every now and then of, like, oh, that giant nine-foot-tall Resident Evil yeah. lady. And everyone's like, please step on me, miss. It's, it's the like, same one okay. of, like, I don't understand men who want to be stepped on in high heels, but it's a thing people do. It is, yeah. 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 But just and no that... shame to that, but no it's sh- yeah. something that I didn't understand when I saw that clip and had to do a bit of research and... Then it's like, okay, I've seen it in a different context now, and fair enough, I guess. Like, yeah. you do you, you hustle that game. Yeah, you do it. You earn that money. And the thing is, though, yeah. like, I, I, that is, it's weirdly more wholesome than what some streamers do. Yeah. <laughs> because at least she's upfront and honest, and the people who do that upfront and honest about what they're doing and what it's all about, and, every, and it is a completely mutual um, like uh, transaction between those yes. people of like they understand what they're getting and they get what they pay for but then you like oh, look God. at all the stuff of um I, the the image that i always bring up is the screenshot that floats around of potentially one of the most depressing fucking interactions on twitch ever and it is a guy i don't even know the name but it's a, a comment on a twitch stream that someone's just like screenshotted and right. like kept for posterity of a guy like, just finish work here's your share and they donate like twenty dollars and then the next, mm. and then the next message they send is, "You didn't see my donation. Um, here's a bit more." And that again, it gets me in the fucking soul God. to picture what your life would have to be like to get in that situation. Yeah. Oh, Just... I, I hate that idea of I have donated, therefore I demand your attention. But also as well, um, I'm but... working and I'm saying I, I work and I give you the money. Cause it's your share. Yeah. The idea that well, here's your share. Like, you've earned your share of my paycheck. It's like, no. No one's earned a share of your paycheck other than you and apparently the government. But that's a different fucking discussion to yeah, me. Like, pay your taxes. But um, I also as well want to just acknowledge something a guy posted in chat of. Uh, one, I'm not talking to Adam, I'm talking to Lucas. Also, do you suffer from depression? That is a very inappropriate question to ask strains on the internet. It is, yes. Like, no like um uh, hate on people like for mental health troubles but do not ask fucking strangers about them it is something that people if they want to talk about it, they can talk about it don't fucking ask it's very very rude it really is and we've discussed it somewhere before of like you know asking people like oh you know um do you have um depression or do you have anxiety or are you having problems with your weight at the moment and it's like Shit like that, if they want to discuss it and bring it up, that's their prerogative. But don't fucking ask a stranger that. Yeah, also don't bring it up, like, up on prompts. So we talked about like, this very start of lockdown. Like, like yeah. a lot of people, we all struggled with like weight and stuff like that because we couldn't go out, we couldn't exercise. Everyone yeah. kind of indulged themselves, like takeaways, beer, that sort of thing. The mm-hmm. amount of people who sent me messages and tweets and emails... Carl, are you okay? You're looking fat in your videos. Like, I'm fucking stuck inside constantly. Oh, also... Fuck you, dude. Why would you say that to a stranger? Yeah, it's multiple levels of that, isn't it? If like, A, why would you say it to a stranger? B, like, so what if I have put on weight? It's none of your fucking business. And C, most of us have put on a bit of fucking weight because we're locked down for like, eh, nearly a year at this point. Also, D, fuck you, buddy. It's none of your business. <laughs> that it needs to be clarified. Just the, the fuck you, buddy. Oh, God. But yeah, that's, that's a that's a... That's a that's a weird one, isn't it? That really is. But yeah, to that dude, I I've not banned you, but f- don't do that shit again. Yeah, just a life lesson right there. Please don't ask people that shit, especially not strangers, unprompted. I get that it says Q and A, but that's not the kind of Q and A we're going for. <laughs> no. <sighs> and as well, I'd just love to put myself in someone's situation like that. Of um, oh, here's a stranger on the internet. They're mm. doing Q and A. I know what to ask them. Let's ask them a deeply personal question about their mental health while they're on camera. <laughs> yeah, that's the weird thing, isn't it? Of um, a lot of people either do stuff like that, or maybe like the opposite of bring their own like bad situation up on a stream chat. Yeah, and it's very difficult while I'm trying to sit there and play games of like, I'm I'm really sorry that you're having a tough time, but my job here is to like, I guess 
play a game and be entertaining. And it's very difficult to then look at a message and be like, you know, X bad thing happened. I won't bring up any examples. And it's like, it kind of gives me that pause of like, I'm I'm really sorry. I'm not like it, I, I'm this. not being a dickhead, and I'm I'm really sorry I offend people by saying this, but like. You know, it is hard to stay in that positive attitude when you've got people just dropping bombshells like that. Yeah, and it is that thing of like, it feels selfish to say, you're really bringing me down with this, but I'm not equipped to deal with it. Also, I've not put myself out there. And I don't think it's fair to dump that on a stranger. Yeah, because I think that's that's the part that gets me is like, I don't know how to respond because I don't even know you and I like I don't know your situation. Like, it is tough and I, I'm not trying to spin it just on my end. Like, I don't feel equipped to give a good response and and be able to you know talk a person down in any kind of way from the situation i i'm not very helpful there's also as well that little selfish part of me that's like if i do this for one person that's fucking it yeah fair enough yeah <laughs> that's it i'm done i will never get any free time ever because then everyone's like well my problems i also want to talk to carl about my problems yeah <laughs> like we're here to entertain not to be a therapist essentially you know what i mean and like i i appreciate that um People are having a lot of tough times, especially at the moment. But I guess, like, you know, it's, it's similar to going to see a comedian and then being like, yeah, but my life's crap. It's like, uh, I'm the one here to try and cheer you up. Like, yeah. why are you trying to bring me down? Oh, no, 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 Pagliacci. Don't do it. Don't do it. But I'm reminded of a great scene in the show Heroes in the earlier seasons. Uh, do you remember mm. Heroes? They all, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People get superpowers. But the guy who gets, like, the ability to mean, uh, read minds. Yeah, yeah, there's a great scene where this happens where he's in a bar and he just sits mm. down, gets a beer, and the bartender asks him that question, like, You okay, buddy? Mm-hmm. And he goes, Well, now you ask. And the bar, and he reads the bartender's mind, the bar says, If you say anything other than things that uh, I'm all right, thanks, just want to enjoy my beer, I will smash this glass over your head. And he goes, You know what? I'm fine. <laughs> Cheers for the beer. Have a good day. And it's like, Yeah, that thing of like, I'm asking, but I don't want you to give, I don't want an answer. I'm doing it to be polite. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and um, I, found that a bit of a strange thing and working in restaurants like working especially in nando's because it was like city center we get a lot of tourists in Mm -hmm. and obviously tourists are from any country in the world you can think of of different people and it's a very british thing to be like oh you're right like that's a greeting yeah people just say yeah i'm fine even if you're not fine just say i'm fine it's it like yeah it is just like saying hello and going, yeah, I'm all right, is like saying hi back. But then you say it to a lot of people who aren't British, and they take it very literally. And sometimes it puts you in a very awkward situation where like, you're serving someone like, at a table, and all of a sudden you're getting the live story. It's like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> it's weird to think that, isn't it? But uh, it's like, like, who comes to Britain and expects British people to be open? An emotional. <laughs> so like you're, you're 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 playing with fire right there. You got no one to blame but yourself, especially a British person. Oh God, it's it, it is very very strange, and uh, you you can kind of immediately tell that we are British streamers rather than like American streamers from the fact that we're not so like crazy and open and yeah, it's a very different vibe. Well, that's, that's the thing, though, isn't it? Of um, just I, I greatly value my privacy, mm-hmm. as I think most people do, because it's like privacy is one of those things that once it's gone, you can't get it back. <laughs> yeah, true. It's like once it's brought, it's gone. You're not getting it back. It's like your virginity. I mean, I can try. I can try and get. You can it back. try, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you're never getting it back. And it's um, but speaking of um, uh, virginity, Lucas, I believe you have um, uh, a, a choice quote about anime. Oh that yeah, we yeah. Discuss. <laughs> Look so, at that. Um, That's a smooth ass segue, right? Let's there. let's transition this over to a different discussion, shall yes, we? Yes, this is. I want to talk about this. I, this I have to get my phone up because um, send it to you on Messenger, which isn't available on PC for like Facebook privacy fucking up reasons and shit. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, yeah. Uh, so I'll find that and I'll find this tweet. Yeah, eat your dick, Facebook. Uh. Well, so, I, can, I can set the scene here. I've, I've, got, just, I've got the tweet, but you set the, the scene for us, Carl. Yeah, this is a, a, a now legendary tweet that Lucas just happened upon um, <laughs> whilst like, you know, just doing his rounds on the internet, as you do. Yeah. And I heard it, did not believe it was real, saw that it was real, cringed into a ball, and we need to talk about it. <laughs> so yeah. without further ado, Lucas, the tweet in question. 
Uh, so this is a tweet from uh, BlackDGamer1. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've put this on a public forum. I'm going to fucking call it out. Yeah, that's the one, yes. Like, we, would, we wouldn't ordinarily, like, you know, just call someone out. But they put this out there publicly. And, as we're about to find out, have doubled, tripled, quadrupled, quintupled. <laughs> six doubled, six doubled, like, whatever you want to do, they've gone all the way down. They're they have died on this hill, yeah. They are currently in China figuring out how to dig into thin air to keep going. <laughs> uh, so, the tweet, the original tweet says... If all your common knowledge of anime is Demon Slayer, Naruto, uh, Inuyasha, Bleach, One Piece, Fate, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Gundam, My Hero Academia, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Ghost in the Shell, then you're not an anime fan. Okay. Normies stay the fuck out of anime. And for context, the gif that he put underneath this is Goku powering up to Super Saiyan. <laughs> like, for no reason. It's like, you couldn't have put an anime gif in there that isn't one of the animes you fucking listed. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, just off that first week, Carl, let's just go. Okay, yeah, well, first of all, if you are a fan of something, you're a fan of it. I, yeah. If you like Dragon Ball, and that's the only anime you've seen, and you say you like anime because you like Dragon Ball, that is a perfectly acceptable position to have. Like, you like yep. that anime, so therefore you do like anime in mm-hmm. some form. Same with, like, um, and it's weird how just visual media like films and shit like that you don't get it with films like you can say like, oh i like movies mm, what's the last what's you, the last like, what's, i like books yes but i think especially with movies you still open yourself up to those people who are like oh yeah but how many scorsese films have you watched yeah and there's like a... what what do you think of the best movies ever and blah 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 you yeah. still get that it, to some extent but it's not quite as prevalent they think. also as well don't smell as bad in my experience. <laughs> because I've met some fuck... I, I don't like to stereotype, but fucking anime fans that stink. There's, there's a oh, reason well, you go to anime... There's a reason you go to anime conventions and they have signs on the door saying, please use your shower. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not great. And any geeky convention kind of thing that I've been to, regardless of whether it's like anime, card games, comics, video games, wear deodorant and shower, please. Yeah. They fucking stink. Also, as well, for anyone wondering, this guy is 100% serious because he doubled mm. triple, as mentioned. He went all the way down. Like He is completely 100% serious that if you only like surface-level anime, I guess is like a way to refer to it. Popular not, anime is yeah. what you want to say, Carl, yeah. Yeah, you are not a fan of this medium. Yeah, um, and that's just fuck right off. That is gatekeeping at its scummiest of just like... Oh, hey, people that like clearly popular things, fuck off. It's like, no, you enjoy it. You can enjoy it all you want. My favorite thing about this sort of thing as well is if you asked him how he got into anime, his answer will probably be, oh, I watched an episode of Dragon Ball as a kid and liked it. No, his answer would have been like, oh, um, I watched Sword Art Online uh, on my own accord and no one had ever told me about yeah. anime. And even yeah. Sword Art Online is Pretty. fucking popular. I don't uh, do rah, rah, rah or some shit like that, like... Something more obscure, but yeah. Yeah, he like his answer would be that he watched Dragon Ball or One Piece or something like that as a kid, thought it more was than cool likely. and decided to explore it. At which point, it's almost like watching the popular things is how you get into the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, I told you recently that I experienced this like back in my days at uni where did, yes. I, again, enjoyed things like One Piece and Dragon Ball and went, oh, I, I've really enjoyed animes that I've watched. I should watch some more animes. Hmm, how should I do that? Maybe I'll ask anime fans. So I went to an anime society in university and immediately got berated with people like, well, you haven't watched this, have you? And what what do you like then? Dragon Ball. And it's like, yeah. And I'm here to ask you and watch other anime with you that isn't Dragon Ball. Like, I'm trying to make an effort and I'm getting shut down immediately. Yeah. So uh, it's gatekeepers are the worst of anything because the way it works is like oh, the way the way always it cra- one of the reasons it cracks me up is because these people when they're mm-hmm. like the people with gatekeeping will simultaneously yep. bitch that no one's a proper fan whilst mm-hmm. also saying why don't more people like this yeah that like, they'll get annoyed that was not like for example more girls who like anime and then they mm-hmm. will berate and bitch out every girl they meet who says they like anime because they don't like the right anime. <laughs> yeah. and i'm always reminded of when i was hanging out with one of my exes um mm. so just we went to a casual gaming competition they mm. told the story before but like my ex-girlfriend yeah she's pretty good looking like, you know she dated me so 
Yeah, yeah. And I and I would put out that I fucking swing with all my girlfriends. So she was like, you know, top tier creme de la creme a woman going out with this lot. That's why she was at okay. fuck, slumming it with me at a gaming um, uh, tournament. <laughs> and she fucking loved Mortal Kombat. Loved yes. it. Absolutely adored Mortal Kombat. Played all the games. And um, I, I went to the bar to get a drink and she got talking to a guy there. Mm-hmm. And I saw her. And I was like doing that thing because I, I told her before the event, like, you're going to get talked to by weird dudes. Because she put on like a really like short dress and did all the makeup stuff. <laughs> so, like, you are going to get every guy there trying to talk to you the moment I leave your side. And she's like, no, yeah. no, happen straight away. So I'm at the bar yeah. just watching this happen. And I see that she has a conversation with this guy, and then she looks kind of uncomfortable. So then I go over and say, oh, hi, yeah. I take her by the hand, we walk away, and that's what happened. And she said, yeah, he asked me what, why I was there. He said, I'm here mm. because I like games. And I said I was with my boyfriend. That didn't seem to matter to him. <laughs> so fair play <laughs> to that guy. And I said that I like Mortal Kombat. And I shit you not, the guy said to her, oh, you like Mortal Kombat? What's the input for Sub-Zero's fatality? Oh. <sighs> And it's just like, I, I wouldn't have believed it unless I, like, you know, witnessed it happen and heard firsthand from her that like, yeah. this is, like, what he did. And I just thought to that guy, he was there talking to a girl, an mm. attractive girl at an event that he was clearly having a lot of fun at, um, who shared an interest in something he clearly enjoyed. And his first response was to give her shit about it. Yeah. <laughs> and I can only think that he walked away from that encounter annoyed at her. Oh yeah, probably not at himself, but at her. Well, I can imagine the the like following um, conversation that he has walking back over to his friends. He didn't going, have any friends. No. Oh, I watched him all night. He, okay, he was there on his own. Walking over to other random people that he was trying to become friends with and going, "Can you believe that girl? She came to this Mortal Kombat thing and didn't know Sub Zero's input for his fatality." Yeah. Oh He's... God. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost like um, you can enjoy something and not be, um, uh, like, you know, just absolutely obsessed with it in in, in all forms. But yeah, I will always exactly. You can, the, there are different levels of both enjoyment and interaction you can have with something. Like, just because you're a mega fan that spends all of their time just delving into every part of this one single subject doesn't mean other people who like it have to do the same thing. Yeah, but... Uh... Just, just keep in mind as well, like you know for a fact, like because we've all met that guy. If you play games, you've met that guy. He mm. is probably one of the people who gets annoyed that no girl shares his interests, and he yeah, had a perfect um, opportunity to speak to a girl who shared his interests, and he fucks it up instantly. Yeah, within moments, and I often see, it specifically with like, um, like gaming communities and fighting game communities. Yeah, it's particularly a violent. lot of people or like that, but then get annoyed that there's not much of a fan base to play in the game anymore. Yeah, like they um, uh, scare off every person who tries to get involved and then loudly wonder why no one plays the game. Yeah, and it's like, I wonder. It's like... Because uh... I've, I've had very, very few experiences where I've gone to like a competition or something a bit more like hardcore for something nerdy and not immediately just been questioned about my, my like fandom. Yeah. It's really, it's really shitty. <laughs> like, then, it really is. It's like way to grow your community, bro. Yeah. And yeah, oh, it's God. it's um. Oh God, I was going to say something. Then I was reminded of something. Now I forgot what it was. Damn. I was well, going to say something. Well, oh, no. I to remember. Okay. I was just going to say. So just um, I will just read out the following. Oh yeah. Tweet. The, the follow-ups to it. Yes. So just so people get a bit of context of like <sighs> what this guy's going on in his head, like. Mm-hmm. Let's get, into, let's, get into his mind, let's get into his mind space, yeah. Let's get into his mind space. Oh, it's a bit yeah. chilly in my house. Sorry, I'm following my house. I'm cold. <laughs> Not because I'm bored. I'm just a bit chilly. Uh, so it seems like a lot of idiots miss the point of this post. Yeah, call <laughs> yeah, everyone yeah. idiots straight away. Cool. Good. What I'm saying is that if that's the only shows you watch and nothing else, then that's a problem. The main reason I said this is because of a bullshit article about Kill La Kill. Um, What's that? The, um, that's archive.md, <laughs> the uncomfortable hypocrisy of Kill la Kill. I haven't read the article, but I don't care what he thinks about Kill la Kill. Because I don't He's care calling he's out from. every single person that just watches popular animes. Yeah. Um, if you're mad at what I just said, just to let you know, I don't care. He you're free does. to disagree with me, <laughs> and you want to have a conversation about this. I really don't care about the name calling. Also, most anti tubers suck balls. Oh, I think it means anti-tubers, anime-tubers. Oh, anti-tubers, yeah, sorry. I anti-tubers, anti-tubers sound great, though. Anti-youtubers. Uh, 
Uh, another tweet. Just want to remind folks that gatekeeping your fandoms is a good thing. Yeah. Bear in mind, gatekeeping the term means actively keeping people out of it. And um, <laughs> I've talked before about this in regards to gaming, but it applies to like any niche. Like, I don't even want to use niche in regards to it. It's all fucking it's pop culture now. It's popular. Yeah. It's yeah. a fucking name. But um, whenever you see some weird man, it's always a fucking man who says it. Like, oh, not enough people. Um, play, like... Uh, proper fans of games or like whatever the fuck i hate casual like mobile gamers um of girl a girl says oh well, i'm a gamer i, I play games so like, i play animal yeah. crossing you're not a real gamer those casual yeah, yeah. fans are the reason your favorite media exists because if mm-hmm. it was not for those casual fans and like you know like uh, the people just buying the game and interacting with it like for example it's used fighting games i love dragon ball fighters yeah. i adore dragon ball fighters i love mm-hmm. that game so much but I, and you can, and I could, I guess like the the community of people who play online at the moment is like ten thousand, on like yeah, a small all... number in comparison to the overall sales of the game. Yeah, like uh, the actual community of people still playing that game online is probably just a couple of thousand people. But that game sold three million copies, and because it sold th- mm. and it sold three million copies, not because three million people wanted to play the game online and get super fucking into it, because they like Dragon Ball and wanted to play a Dragon Ball fighting game. And the reason yeah. that game is still being supported and getting DLC is not for those 10,000 people still playing it online. It's no. for the 3 million people who bought it who just like Dragon Ball. Again, like, we are literally talking about, you know, fine games and we start the podcast talking about, oh yeah, Smash Bros. Ultimate News is coming tonight. That game isn't getting supported because, as you say, like, 10,000 or 50,000 people play online still and get really deep into the game and want competitions and stuff. No. It's because it sold like 18 million copies and is the most successful fighting game of all time. Yeah. That's why they're supporting that game for three plus years. Because they know that if they release that DLC, like, I don't know, like 2 million people are going to buy it. And yeah, that- every time they launch a Steve from Minecraft is now in Smash or Sephiroth is coming another 100,000 people are going to go buy that game, or a million people, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be... Depending and, on the character. And those, like... like so I was just use like, those million people, just, like, you know, just to throw yeah. out a random number, buying that DLC, is going to fund development on the game, which is then going to continue being supported for that 10,000 people fucking playing it online. Exactly, yeah. And, and then... Um, you- you know, you know, buried amongst that 10,000, there are people like, I fucking hate casual fans. I don't like, or when they talk to me, I like Smash. I play with items. Yeah. You don't play Smash properly. It's like, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. They're the fucking reason the game exists. It would not have been made if not for those casual fans showing that it has a big like, enough audience to release it and justify yeah, like, the scope the of it. The couple hundred thousand people that play Smash without items are not the reason those games get made. Yeah. Like, for sure. And it's the same with uh, the most fucking money-making thing at the moment in the world of just, like, Marvel movies. Yeah. Of, like, Marvel movies are not getting made. Not movies like Endgame. Endgame isn't getting made because of hardcore Marvel fans. No, it's getting made because of the casual audience that watches it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, god damn, that thing earned $2 billion or whatever it fucking was, and that wasn't because of comic book fans. No. And But when you tell them that, they'll get mad. And it's like, no, I we're like why and then they'll wonder out loud, why don't they cater towards my specific highly limited interests? And it's because if mm. they did that, there'd be an audience for that of like like what said, ten thousand people. And that's why, yeah. for example, with anime, you've probably seen like when you try and buy anime DVDs and stuff, they cost like two, three hundred quid. Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they are aimed at that like, you know, hyper specific part of the consumer base. Mm-hmm. And you could not find an anime fan who does not fucking hate that. They all bitch about the <laughs> fact that anime costs so much. And it's like, that's because it's super fucking niche. If it was more popular, like Dragon Ball, even though Dragon Ball is super expensive. It's a bad example. Yeah, if it was yeah. more popular, and this is a thing like more people, and it's becoming more popular now, you mm-hmm. get stuff like Crunchyroll and stuff like that, it would be easier for you to access. <laughs> well, that's the thing is, because it's becoming more popular, we're getting things like the Funimation app and the Crunchyroll app and they're getting more high-profile things on there, which then just is that constant loop of they're getting things like Dragon Ball on, which gets more people in, which gets more people into the yeah. anime. And it's like the entire reason all of this, like these good things are happening 
for things you enjoy is because the casual fans. So for that dickhead, the whole reason that those niche interests, like those super like, inside like anime shows that you watch even have the fucking ability to exist is because of the casual fans funding the entire industry and letting people invest in it and showing that it's something you should invest in. You directly benefit from those casual fans while shitting on them. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It really is. And a lot of the time... You know, you can even see shit like um, the Pokemon Sword and Shield controversies <laughs> where, like, those, those like, niche amount of people got who play really com- wound up on the internet. Com- that who play community yeah. get really annoyed of, like, well, every Pokemon isn't going to be in there. Like, the National Dex is not going to be in this Pokemon game. Fuck Game Freak. I'm never buying a game from them ever again. Which is a lie, they all fucking bought it. But then, well, then say, it's like the second highest selling Pokemon game of all time. Yeah, almost like the games aren't made for that audience. And if they were, it'd be a shit game because it would not have <laughs> the it would not have the budget marketing or it might even get released. Mm-hmm. If Nintendo did like marketing and found out, okay, so who buys it? Competitive players. So let's say again that te- that number of ten thousand. So that's ten thousand yeah. people buy it, fifty quid. So we can potentially make. 50,000, or 5 million would it be? 10,000 times. 500 grand. 500 grand. 500 grand. So, okay, it's 500, uh, half a million. I'm really bad at math, sorry, off the top of my head. So, (laughs) half a million dollars. Okay, we need to make it, and most most products get released, they want to make at least 50% profit, so the budget for it is 250 grand. Yeah. Can you, could you make Pokemon for 250 grand? No. (laughs) Could you make Smash Bros for 250 grand? No. No. Could you make Endgame for 250 grand? No. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> could you make Dragon Ball for two... No, you couldn't make anything for that amount of money. Like, anything big. Yeah. And if there wasn't, like, that, those big things in the thing, like, you know, at funneling money into there, and then casual fans, like, you know, potentially finding all the, like, the less, the more niche stuff, the less well-known stuff, it, it's crazy that people well, um... would so actively campaign against something that benefits them in every... Like, it makes the the thing they love. It gives it more money, and that's something I've seen a lot about Game Pass lately. Of like people constantly going, "Well, um, Game Pass means people aren't buying games anymore. It's cannibalizing the market. It's like lowering sales. It's making things worse for the developers. Microsoft aren't going to be able to keep doing it because they're going to be hemorrhaging money buying like licenses for all these games." And then you actually look at what Microsoft and developers are saying, and they're like, people are playing more games, people are buying more games, people are spending longer playing games, and it's like, you buy Game Pass because you see, oh, okay, well, the Gears 5 is on Game Pass. Yeah. Cool. Well, Gears 5 costs 50 quid anyway. That gets me five months of Game Pass. But when you're done with Gears 5, you've got four months left on Game Pass, and you've got all of these games that you would have never touched. You've also got 50 quid saved. I know it's not safe. She's still spending it on the game, but you've got you know more money. It's like subscription services. That's how they work, isn't it? Like people, it's like saying, oh, people with Netflix don't go to the cinema. Yeah, they're still gonna go to the fucking cinema. It's like, oh, um, I like um, I don't know, like fucking ordering from Just Eat. Just because you get takeaways yeah. from Just Eat means you're not gonna go to a restaurant. It's like, of course, I'm gonna go to a restaurant. It's the same thing on paper. Yeah, but there's like a different experience around it. And that's the thing is because I'm not gonna see a game that costs 15 quid and it's like an indie game that I vaguely heard of. Someone mentioned it yeah. once and said, oh yeah, that's a good game, check it out. I'm probably not in that mind space and like the financial space to go, well, I'll just drop 15 quid on it. Yeah. But when it's just sitting there on Game Pass, it's going to take me 10 minutes to download and I can try it there You'll give it with the cost already included. I'm going to go try it out. You'll give it a swing. But I will continue this conversation. I'm going to go for a quick bathroom break. It's going to be yeah, one minute. Cool. So for my chat, I guess, just, yeah, just chat. So um, I'm going to just give a quick little clap and then I'm going to read through my chat and not really like talk too much while Carl takes a break, just so I can cut for the audio version. Just keeping an eye out for like any um, any questions that I might be able to bring into the Q and A or anything like that. So feel free to just drop one in chat now if you want to.
So that was there fast. Was there fast. Is. You know, the quick and often the small wood way. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So I'm going to just do a quick little clap again for the audio. Yeah, this is for the for visual watchers. Visual watchers. For what people watching, this is for the audio that thinks that Luke's going to edit that out. <laughs> no. Oh, so uh, we're back. And something that I wanted to mention, I remembered what it is I was going to talk about or bring up. Like, we're oh, discussing, okay, cool. you know, uh, like gamers, fans, gatekeeping dickheads simultaneously yeah. lamenting the fact that nobody enjoys the thing that they do whilst actively discouraging people from entering the community. Mm -hmm. uh, and we mentioned Smash Bros, which reminded me, I always talk about the Smash Bros documentary. Do you recall that? Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The famous four-hour documentary about Smash Bros, which is, I recommend watching it because it's fascinating, but it has aged incredibly poorly, which is why I think it's worth watching. Um, yeah, I've rewatched it since a lot of the Smash controversy came out, what, like last year? Mm -hmm. And it's glorifying a lot of Smash Bros players in a way that is not good to do anymore. Yes. For sure. It uh, looks also very poor in context. But when you take into the account, like the fact that it was made six years ago or whatever, um, it's actually a very well done documentary yeah because yeah, um, it was all fan done wasn't it and they get like a it was yeah go super deep and inside it's like one of the one of those early like video essays i guess but the reason mm -hmm. i think it's just called the smash bros documentary just putting like the uh, you'll find yeah it. i think so and if not if you youtube search smash, smash bros. bros documentary it will be like that four part thing that comes up and it's talking mainly about the melee scene Yes, but one of the reasons I think it's it's worth a watch today, even if you're not interested in it, is because um, so many Smash Bros fans still hold it up as like, whenever the community gets criticised, like, no, it's really good. It highlights how inclusive the Smash Bros community is. And there is a part of that documentary that is just so harrowing to watch. And you know what bit I'm talking about, don't you, Lucas? Uh, I presume you're talking about the, the bit where they have the... One interview with a female, I believe, yeah. at like milk tea, is it? It may be, yeah. I don't remember, recall. Um, uh, I don't, I don't, a hundred, not a hundred percent sure on her, like, you know, handle, um, it's like the fake name they come up with, you know. Yeah, but like throughout the entire documentary, they have interviews with all the Smash Bros players, and mm -hmm. like you just look and it's like, oh yeah, the, the Smash Bros, and they talk about how diverse the Smash Bros community is like, in terms of race, it is. Like, yeah, and and they talk about you know how much. Um, they all try to be inclusive with one another and like yeah. gain friendships over time through going to different events and things like that. And then across like you know international boundaries as well. So there's Japanese players and there's like American players and there's European players and it's yeah. this big melting pot of like you know multiple ethnicities. But there's not a single woman, not a single woman in that interview. Fifty percent. Well, there's, there's that one. There is the one, one yeah, interview up, with up the woman, until yeah. like two and a half hours in. So for two and a half mm. hours, they don't have a single woman talk. Uh, on camera once yeah 50 percent of the population is completely fucking hard apparently women don't play games they do they definitely do they definitely yeah. do they definitely play smash as well yeah and uh, they don't talk about it at all it's not referenced and until you get to about two and a half hours in and what happens lucas uh so the interview one woman um who again like i'm not 100 sure on the name of but like all that happens is like, did you play melee? Yes. Okay. Do you play melee anymore? No. Okay. Well, like, what happened? And essentially, if I'm getting this right, Carl, like, it was essentially down to you know the language and the terminology and the mentality of the players. Yeah, everyone is very boisterous, very like boys' club mentality. Also, mm -hmm. the word rape is thrown around as just a you know, just a pejorative. Just it's just yeah. a term. And they have this really telling scene where they ask someone straight up, yeah, do you feel bad about using this language? And the guy just goes, oh, it's just the way it's always been. Yeah. Directly after the one female player interviewed in the thing says, I stopped playing this game because of the language being used because it made me feel unwelcome as a woman in this community. And they're like, yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. And that is the thing because... Okay, um, 
especially with the case of like that documentary, you see a lot of those players started when they were younger. Um, and it could have been one of those moments where it's like, look, no one's ever really brought this to our attention, but this is something we should talk about. This is something we should stop doing. Mm-hmm. And this is something we can learn from. And you've got a quote from one of the ex players who was female who said, that is like pretty much the reason I stopped playing. It made me uncomfortable. You could have gone, hands up, okay, this is awful. This is something we should change. And it's said they were, eh, whatever. Yeah, it's the way it's always been. But keep in mind as Why well, change it? this documentary is put forward by fans and the people in it as a showcase of how open and inclusive the Smash Bros community is and why people watching at home should get into it and go to local tournaments and scenes. Yeah, it was essentially meant to be like a An promotional documentary yeah. in, in one way or another, yeah. Like, oh, if you like this, like, if you like what you see, go check out your local scene. Un- apparently, unless you're a woman. Apparently so. Just automatically writing off 50% of the population. I mean, I guess not that. It's just, <laughs> you can be a woman, you just have to sit there and be made uncomfortable because three people throw terms around like that all the time. And then when they're asked to examine their behaviour, just immediately turn hostile. Yeah. And, and uh, again, as I said, that's that scene was brought up by a lot of people that were like, you know, young teenagers at the time. And I get that maybe they didn't really know how bad the things they were saying were at the time. And it kind of became a little bit ingrained within it. But yeah, that should have been moments where they, they get called out and try to better themselves for it. And it's just not. It's no, And they still defend it to this day. There's people out there still defend that sort of thing to this day. And it's a lot worse when you now have the modern context of all of this sexual harassment stuff that came out about the Smash Bros community and especially like the melee community specifically. Yeah, and the fact that um, it was being run by like, you know, old hands who use their clout and um, uh, reputation within the community to just like, you know, abuse and otherwise take advantage of newer players. Again, which adds that thing of like, oh yeah, if you're young and you want to play Smash Bros, come to your local community and then you find out like fucking everyone involved is a huge piece of shit. And, like, obviously not everyone was, um, like, actually, you know, sexually harassing people. But at the same time, it sounds like a lot of those people knew about what was going on and chose to stay silent. And that it was as well, just a known factor. In that. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's just really funny. Like, it's a perfect as well example and encapsulation. Like, funny in that way, like, you know, the macabre. Just way of, yeah. like, ugh. Like, darkly humorous, I should say. So it's not funny that, like, you know, it's that kind of stuff gets banded around. It's just funny in that dark way of they're simultaneously saying, uh, why is our community so small when it's so accepting and open, whilst simul- in the same breath defending using language that actively diminishes and makes women feel unwelcome? Yeah, exactly. And it's just, oh, God. it It's so weird to see how, like, just... I don't know, blatantly ignorant they are about it. And then they also have the the balls to sit there and go, why don't people play this more? Yeah, it's great. It's like one of those things, it is, hilar- again, hilarious seeing juxtaposed next to one another. Simultaneously mm. saying, why don't more people play this game? The community is super open and welcoming while throwing around slurs that make people feel unwelcome and uncomfortable. Yeah. God. It's great, but... Like uh, I feel, you know, that's that's a good way, like good place to end it. Just know, oh, Smash Bros sucks ass. Come out with Smash Bros fans. Melee sucks. Eat a dick. Yeah, the the community clearly has fucking issues, and I don't. I I think at this point it might just be re- beyond repair. But also, reputation. Like, let's wise, get hyped yes. for fucking new Smash Bros Ultimate character. I exactly. Guess. Yes. So, but um, as usual, we'll do. We'll end with Q and A. So we'll yeah. just riff for a couple of minutes while you know the Q and A filters through in our chats and if people want to ask lucas questions you can put exclamation point lucas in my chat to find his stream and i'll pick a couple questions lucas pick a couple questions and we'll go through those in a couple minutes but uh before that lucas anything you want to plug yeah i um, I will just do the usual plug for anyone that's used to this podcast on it's just that you can find me and my gaming content at legend of canto both on twitch and youtube you can indeed yes and i think you just cow small wood you'll find me there we go. It's, it's You'll super, find Carl. It's super fucking easy, isn't it? I, and then, I guess, <laughs> the people watching the stream um, right now, um, in about two, three hours, me and Luke will be playing Borderlands 2 on stream. Yeah. And we're going to play through the whole story, I think, yeah? 
Uh, yeah, like, the plan is to at least complete the campaign, I guess. Like, do the campaign together, and that will be yeah. going up on our respective channels, so you can see the playthrough from our respective points of view. Um, exactly. On our channels, so if you're, like, listening to this after the fact and think, why should I give a shit about that, you can go watch, um, presumably an archive of that stream on one of our channels. You can, yeah, and we'll, uh, be, as we said, sticking through the campaign and completing Borderlands 2 to the best of all abilities. Because that is a fun game. And as well, speaking of, you know, um, uh, what's the word now? Like representation and inclusivity. Borderlands yeah. is weirdly good for that. Uh, like, there's so many yeah. characters in that game who are just gay, and it's just never common. It's just, they're just gay. Yeah. And it's not made a big deal of at all. Guess just, what, Call gay people they exist. They do, yeah. Like, Hamalock is just no, I'm not. I, I'm, I know that you know that, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, it's weird that like so many people get weirded out when it's like well, that character's gay and they didn't even mention it it's like yeah because why i don't walk around telling everyone i'm straight yeah. like it's like people can be gay why would gay people do the same you know what i mean and that's one of the like the neat things about borderlands where just like a lot of characters are just gay and it's never commented upon and then you just mm. like uh, like hammerlock for example he'll just talk he'll just mention in conversations like an ex-boyfriend oh right it. yeah yeah and they never make a big deal out of it yeah and I, I like that because that's the, I, I feel the best way to handle that sort of thing. Of like, don't even make a big deal out of it. Just put it in the game. If people don't like it, they can fuck off. Exactly, yeah. Oh, dear. And, um, and then you have... Oh, um, I do have a, a question I want to address. Okay, yeah, sure. So I've Luke's seen gonna one be... earlier on. There we go. Luke's going to get a question. Go for it. And it's someone asking for the Soul Silver playthrough on my YouTube channel. Okay. Are we going all the way to red. Um, yeah, he's got the, the he's the final trainer. Well, yeah, Good we're way. finishing the game. However, like spoilers for anyone that does see <laughs> the this, on Friday, the episode is called finale because we're going to beat the champion Lance, and we're going to make it. Uh, that's the joke, and that's just because Carl asked me, please, before we go to Canto, make an episode called like the final episode mm -hmm. just so people think that we don't know what's going to happen yeah for the... to talk with people so yeah the next episode to go live is actually called like finale just, just to, to stick around with people a bit to see how many people like do you not know you can go to canto it's like it's the most famous twist in all of video games yes we know uh, but it is funny to see like the kind of people like how do you not know this like, we do it's, it's a joke yeah it's yeah. a joke on you so i'm excited to see how that joke lands i am uh, we have one here. Um, what do you think of Martin Scorsese's take on streaming services and Marvel movies? Did you see this? Uh, I, I I haven't seen what this must be specifically referring to. I know ages ago Scorsese said he doesn't really like Marvel films and thinks that they're just like fucking roller coasters or some shit. Yeah, like he's an old man yelling at Cloud now where he yeah. wrote this long um, uh, just uh, article about streaming services are bad for cinema because then you let the algorithm decide what you like and no longer do you get to experience cinema as it's intended. It's like, fuck off, Marty. Like, yeah. get a dick. Like, it's fucking movies. Get over yourself. I, like, that talking. is man pissed off that technology is changing the way his business, like, his, you know, um, industry is working. Yeah, he's, it's, like, he's, it's almost as if, you know, sometimes you have to adjust. It's like when you see a lot of stuff like Christopher Nolan getting pissed off that, oh, cinema is not going to be a thing. It's like, oh, yeah, the experience of cinema is something that can't be replicated. It's like, yeah, but fuck off, we're in a pandemic. Yeah. This is the way things are now. Deal with it. God. I respect him as a filmmaker, but fuck you. Get out, get off your high horse. It's a movie at the end of the day. Yeah, it is. And, like, just because streaming services exist doesn't mean that theatres won't and like the pandemic might mean theaters won't but like streaming services weren't the end of theaters and the end of people wanting to go to theaters yeah also uh, is, is the key thrust to his argument is that like um, if you let the algorithm decide what people watch that will decide what movies get made and keep in mind as well martin scorsese comes from a time when marginalized people and you know voices from minorities were largely ignored in cinema yeah, yeah. Like, every big director is a fucking white man. Mm -hmm. Streaming services are allowing those voices to finally be heard because there is now the algorithm that he hates so much. He's showing that people give a fuck about that. Yeah, exactly. 
it's like we got uh, we didn't even get a chance to talk about the Winter Soldier. There was a great article about that I read where it's uh, the, the mm. showrunner is like, finally, I get to tell a black story. I in the and I'm I'm picking up the the gauntlet. Oh, not the gauntlet. But I'm picking up the ball that Ryan Coogler had, and I'm going to run with it of showing that like you know black what? St- Ryan Coogler the ball that he picked up. No, no, like for what show? Sorry, uh, or Win- what movie? Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, Falcon! I thought you were talking about the Winter Soldier, like the oh, movie sorry, that sorry. came out. Falcon and the Winter right, Soldier. Okay. It's like it's going to be. A I was like, I did I miss something in the Winter Soldier? I... No, no, it's going to be yeah, a. Okay. Uh, it's going to be like a black story. It's like you know, it's ostensibly about Sam Wilson, and I love yeah. as well. Uh, that that subtly indicates that um, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> the Winter Soldier is an honorary black guy. <laughs> Do from his time in Wakanda. Were they talking yeah, about true, black to people? be fair, yeah. Like, if anyone can claim, do you have that excuse of I've got a black friend? It's fucking the Winter Soldier. He, when did, everybody... he did get away with living in Wakanda for a while. Yeah, yeah. everyone in Wakanda knows his name, but uh, that one. And I don't think something like that would have got made if not for streaming services. Because no. Because it has been proven and shown time and time again that Hollywood, as like, you know, just an abstract entity, did not want to uh, let um, those voices be heard. Yeah. Until they realise yeah. it's profitable. So I look at it from that, that kind of thing. Of when you see someone lamenting, oh yeah, the age of cinema is over. Um, we don't want the, like, don't let the algorithm decide what, um, what you do and do not listen to because it's going to result in just like, just blockbuster movies and superheroes uh, stuff being made. It's mm-hmm. like, well, the stuff that was getting me before was just all fucking white dudes. So if yeah. it means that marginalised people and uh, minority people get like, you know, get the chance to make movies and have their stories be told, so fucking be it. Yeah, exactly, and it it opens that avenue up to a lot more people because not everything has to be a, a huge blockbuster movie. Or a huge, like, you know, cinematic masterpiece. Sometimes yeah. people want to eat fast food. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it's just, I, I just cannot read it and just, like, read the excerpts and just see his thing without thinking, old man yells at cloud. Mm-hmm, yeah, Totally. When I hear those takes from someone like Sylvester, it's like you're just mad that things are changing. Yeah, it's also that you're oh, mad that um, your slice of the pie is getting like marginally smaller. Yeah, yeah. Because other people are now allowed to join this um, once exclusive club. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, I I used to run this fucking place. It's like, well, you don't anymore. Yeah. I, Sorry, Martin. The you're future. great. <laughs> like, well, the films you make are great anyway. I don't know much about him as a person, but. Sounds like he's a bit bitter nowadays. He's just like Christopher Nolan. He's just super salty. He's yeah. so mad that cinema's not a thing anymore, or that he's not going to be a thing for a while. Like he's so fucking pissed off that Tenant didn't do well. <laughs> it's like, but surely he he like a lot of that comes down to the way Nolan treated all that because he's the one that was pushing to make sure that it saw release in theaters and shit during a pandemic. And yeah, and then he got mad that it didn't do very well. And he blame, and yeah, he blame, it's like you, you shot yourself in the foot there a bit, mate. I still like, though, um, that people, just to piss off um, uh, Christopher Nolan, are watching stuff like Dunkirk on their iPhones. <laughs> like, was, uh, someone got like managed to find a way to watch all of Dunkirk on their Apple Watch. Because <laughs> he's like a big proponent of like cinema and like aspect yeah. ratios and stuff. It's like, no, fuck it, I'm watching it on my Apple Watch. Fuck oh, you, there's nothing, there's nothing you can do to stop this. <laughs> which is really funny so you got a question in your chat uh yeah quick one is like just oh uh, what color is my hair today it's blue and pink still but it was just a bit greasy today and i didn't have time to wash it so i wiped the hat on yeah not my, gonna lie about it like my hair is a bit of a mess but i'm gonna for like a jog in a sec i'm gonna go straight for a yeah, jog and some food and then get a quick shower um but yeah someone else said like how long did it take to grow my beard uh that's a i don't it. know <laughs> that's a couple days of that growth here for you because I've had a beard for a long time. You have, yeah. So, I don't... I don't. I, it's a hard thing to quantify because I've had a beard for 10 years straight. Uh, but then, you know, you trim it down, let it grow, blah, blah, blah. But I've not been clean-shaven for the longest amount of time. I would guess this is probably like a month or two of growing and trimming if I did it from fresh, but I have no clue at all. That's all. Because as again, I've had a beard for ten years. I yeah. don't know how quickly it grows. We've got no idea, have we? But uh, no. I, and funny enough, I can't grow a beard. I have to shave every day, but I can't grow a beard. Yeah, I, like I know quite a few people like that. Where it's like, oh well, my facial hair grows really quickly, but also really spotty. Yeah. So I can't even just get away with like leaving it for a bit. 
Yeah, I'll never be able to do that. But I'm not fussed. I prefer to be clean shaven. Yeah. My girlfriend prefers me to be clean shaven, so it works out fine. But uh, yeah. let's have a quick look then. Do, 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 do. Question, question, question. It's going through. Uh, what is the most wholesome community you have ever experienced? I'm trying to think. Um, the last thing, probably the gym. I wouldn't say it's not particularly a community, but um, when I've been to the gym, like, you often hear horror stories about people there being like really unwelcoming. Or That's rough. kind of the side I've experienced personally, yeah. But um, I've ne- I never not once been to the gym and not been able to find someone who can like help or give me advice, like, you know, at least before the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, like... Um, Generally, when if you ask someone for help or to spot you or to like watch your form or to give mm. some advice, most of the people there are happy to do it. In fact, see it as a compliment. Fair enough, yeah. Like as in the one that I found, uh, or the experience that I've had is the bigger and scarier looking the guy, the nicer they tend to be. Like when you go up to that huge I, I, big buff dude, usually it's like oh, sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. The I, people I've spoken to in the gym that I was at. Uh, some people are very nice, friendly, approachable. Other people will like walk out, walk over to you and just basically be like, I'm bigger than you, get off my fucking machine. And yeah, I've had that a couple of times. And obviously I've had more nice experiences than Good. not, but the, the, okay. the ones where people like bully you off the machine definitely stand out a bit more to me. Okay, fair enough. And it's that thing of you have to play it by ear and not everyone's going to be yeah. nice. But at the same time, I think more than anything, just I've had more positive interactions going to the gym than I've had. Like we've talked earlier, didn't we? With like gaming stuff. Something well, I was I was actually going to bring up a gaming community and that is the Destiny community. Okay. And the Destiny community, like from my experience, is generally just very welcoming and willing to help people out. Um you obviously are, have to be careful, like, with, for example, I'm talking about, like, oh, going on a looking for group post mm-hmm. and seeing somebody go, like, oh, yeah, you know, we're going to try the raid out and, like, yeah, have a chill raid and just try and get through it. Mm-hmm. Those are the people you want to play with, not the ones going, like, you must be this power level, know what to do, blah, blah. Like, avoid shit like that and obviously have a bit of common sense. But for the most part, when I've joined in with a group, and like talk to them, everybody's like really chilled out and very like inclusive, willing to mm-hmm. help others learn and stuff like that. I've always had really good experiences with that kind of thing and it's been a hugely, hugely uncommon occurrence where anybody hasn't been nice. Like one percent of interactions have been bad, maybe. Yeah. So like eat a dick anime community. You need to get on the level of um, uh, bodybuilders and destiny fans. <laughs> Because that's how you fucking grow a community, man. Just be nice. It's oh, really yeah. easy. If, people, if you're nice, people want to hang out with you. Exactly, yeah. If people have and, positive um, experience I think with it, the game. It does say a lot where you see a lot on like the Destiny Reddit of people going, like, oh my god, like, thank you for being such a nice community. And then that makes other people go, oh, well, maybe I will try out work playing with random people. And it just kind of it, it fosters itself at the end. Yeah. And then I guess like one last question from yours, Lucas. What we got? Uh, I am not sure, but give me one moment. Have a scroll. Uh, Have a little scroll. Oh, do, 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 do. He's doing it. He's scrolling. He's searching. He's scheming. There's nothing that stands out to me if you've got any questions that you can find. Okay, one last one then. Uh, yeah. Da, 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 da. People just like, do you play Watch Dogs now? <laughs> That's a really easy one. It's someone just asks a question when you can't like when it's just a yes or no. Isn't yeah. uh, isn't this motherfucking community? Keep in mind, I, 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 like my general like the only time I've like actively interacted with the uh, the fact community is like the live event, which is nice. I just didn't want to sound like a prick. Yeah, by saying this community. Yeah, and the last thing is like that nice. generally when I've interacted with most fans of this community has been good but yeah i just don't yeah. want to sound like a prick by saying this one it's, it's yeah really bad look on yourself to be like yeah i think we're the best yeah so, and as well i don't think the person asking the question wanted me to say that <laughs> that, that seems a bit like you know full of myself they probably want to be like you know, it does yeah outside of it but yeah like uh everyone in, most of the people in fact be nice but it's just as you mentioned like the negative experiences stick out in your head they're also more fun to talk about 
They are a lot more interesting to talk about. Yeah, they make for a better podcast than, hey, people yeah. were nice to me. Yeah, yeah, as well. That just sounds like Braggart Lee. Like, the British part of me don't want to do that. <laughs> the British part of me, it's like when you watch, it's the difference between American sitcoms and British sitcoms where you mm. look at an American sitcom, it's like, oh, I'm so smart and wonderful. I'm good with a PhD and having a big dick. It's like, yeah. I fucking hate that character. Yeah. Like, when you look at British sitcoms, it's like, you're all downtrodden. You feel sorry for them. Like, you empathize with them. That's what you want. Yeah, look, like- I definitely think that British people enjoy a humble person, an underdog type character, rather than somebody who's very full of themselves. Exactly, yes. We can end it on that. British people are more humble. Go go. Or, or maybe not more humble, uh, but we enjoy humble characters more. Yeah. British people are assholes. They are, yes. Especially abroad. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll be back again in a couple hours with some Borderlands 2. Yeah, and um, I don't like to break up the podcast or anything, but like, while we're just holding off, like anyone that I like, has donated and uh, subbed and stuff, like thank you very much. But I don't like to individually call everyone out as we're podcasting. It breaks up things a lot, but yeah, it's much yeah. appreciated. Also, yeah, what Lucas said—that's that's a good answer too. I'll use that one too. <laughs> <laughs> See everyone in a couple hours.